Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, brought to you by Party Slate, our title sponsor, the first website designed specifically for event professionals and venues. And be sure to check them out at partyslate.com. And so here on The Wedding Biz, I conduct in-depth and revealing interviews of icons and those who I feel are the next generation icons of the weddings and event industry. This is all to provide you with education and inspiration for any entrepreneur, but especially in the event industry. And I got to say, I here I am again. I've been talking about how important it is to take a break. It is about 5 p.m. It is a stunning, beautiful fall day outside. I have been in my office the entire day, like just nonstop, like a bullet train. I know a lot of you can relate to me about this, but I did go out last night. I went out with my girlfriend. We went and saw Macy Gray at a really cool venue. And I'll tell you what, every time I experience some kind of I was going to say really any kind of experience involving art, some kind of art, but especially music, I get so many inspirations. And again, it's like taking that time to give yourself to really enjoy something that moves you, that makes you feel that sparks an idea. And I I was sitting there at the concert (laughs) typing away in my phone and I'm going to apply these ideas. Anyway, if you missed last week's episode, it was with Audrey Netakoulis, photographer out of Paris. Her style is beautiful and emotional, really stunning. She also has a brilliant way of using social media, especially Instagram, and run, runs these just wonderful retreats, has a great story. So uh, listen to Audrey's last week if you missed it. Uh, this week, very fun for me to announce that it is Lindsay and Cherish Conklin of La Rev Films. Um, They are a film team known for their work for Engage Summits, amongst numerous other discerning clients. To them, cinematography is so much more than just film. It's building a relationship with clients and telling their stories in the best ways possible. And I discovered them through what they did related to this for Engage. I believe it was for the Bahamar summit and they just the way they captured the emotion of the event i thought was so brilliant so beautiful i was really moved by it and that's how i came to know them and reach out to them they also talk not only about film but about how they use social media to their advantage and give some great networking tips and also how they um, not only network but how how do they continue to nurture those relationships some really good ideas so Enjoy my conversation with Lindsay and Cherish of La Rev Films. Cherish and Lindsay, it is so good to have you on the show on The Wedding Biz. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. So is it true that you all, I mean, look, not only, I, I, you know, I know you're married and you're business partners, but did you meet at the age of three? Is that true? We did crazy how <laughs> like like yeah seriously like this where how how this happen? there was a bar for three-year-olds no. <laughs> and i was like hey oh, do God, you uh, me. can i buy you a bottle you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> right or or, or hey want to share my pacifier <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly no we you know we grew up in a small town um so we live in marietta california and both of our families ended up ironically moving to marietta at the same time, 1989, and it was very, 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 very small. Uh, a lot of people know Temecula, which is kind of our sister city. And um, it was just a community where everybody kind of knows everybody. My parents, they own a pool store, a pool supply store in Temecula. And, you know, everybody came in and and cherished and his parents. parents. had a pool. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's convenient. That's where all those kids are going to hang out is yeah, whoever right. has the pool. So. <laughs> We, so we've just always known of each other, I would say. And it wasn't until like middle school and high school that we ended up kind of connecting and becoming friends. We had a, a class together in, in high school and it just kind of happened from there, you know? So you were boyfriend and girlfriend in high school, even before that? Towards the end of it, he was definitely in the friend zone for most of our high school <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. All right. Yeah. So that... I think, you know, we should do a whole another podcast on that, Andy, like how to get out of the friend zone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Oh, man, seriously. Do you know you could help millions and gazillions of guys? That's true. That is like the biggest challenge. Oh, my God. Right. That That's funny. So, back in school, did either of you or both of you have any kind of a passion for, for film, for video? Did it start at any point then? I mean, Lindsay has a better story, but for me, as 
a kid growing up, I was always kind of the one in charge of the the video camera. If it wasn't for me, we would have no home videos of our family. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's funny. So that's kind of like how it started for me. Um, Lindsay has a better, I guess, story of how he came up in yeah. all of it. Yeah. I mean, I always had an interest in video. I took classes in school, you know, multimedia classes and video editing and stuff like that. Anytime there was a school project, I was busting out the video camera because it was like a guaranteed A plus when you did a video <laughs> oh, really? for a school project, because, you know, not everybody had that experience or expertise. And so like doing a video, you know, it was impressive to the teacher. And, and as long as you kind of like handle the assignment properly, you, you get a good grade. So <laughs> I think that's where I, I realized you could go far in life with, with uh, video production. Yeah, but do you remember, Lindsay, we'll start with you, what what drew you to multimedia at that time? Honestly, I just, I like the idea of being able to create something. And that was the medium that I chose. I mean, I, I like to draw and I like to do things like that, but I loved, I loved to be able to create and tell stories and you could kind of create your own little fantasy world. Uh, I was, was doing videos with some of my friends that lived on the streets. Like we, we started a lot of movies. We never actually finished any movies, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but we always like had these, you know, ideas of grandeur of we're, Oh, we're going to make a movie. And, you know, so we just, we're always goofing around and, and making home videos and, and videos. I did a lot of like stop motion animation with like Legos and stuff like that. And so I just, I just really, you know, in, enjoyed it. It was, it was an outlet for me and, and it, it kind of just has stayed with me my whole life. Well, I'm going to, Cheris, I'm going to come to you in a minute, but Lindsay, mm-hmm. just to kind of carry out the story. So, did you did you go to college and, and major in anything related to this? I did not. No, I, I never went to uh, college. I, I went right into the family business. What is that? So, my parents, they uh, like I said, they own a pool supply store. They also oh, that's right. own a service route. And so, I, I went right into the family business. I, at 17, I started cleaning pools. I was the pool boy. <laughs> oh no! Come, all, all right, now do you have stories for us? And you know what I'm talking about. I do have stories. I mean, I was a good. I'm a good boy, so I didn't. I didn't get into any trouble. But oh, I forget. Cherish is no, on the other <laughs> line here. Yeah. No, she knows. No, I mean, you have older women that always seem to be laying out. <laughs> oh yeah, at the appointed <laughs> at the, time that you're supposed to at come the by. The time, pool boy. Yeah. This is so cliche. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, it is. If I came a day early or a day late, she wasn't there. But if I came on the scheduled oh, time, are you kidding me? You're serious? Yeah, it was terrifying. <laughs> oh, that's right, because you're 17. I was, All I, right. yeah, I was like 17 or 18 or something at the time, you know. And I'm like, what is going on? I didn't know what to do. I didn't oh. know what to do. So. <laughs> yeah, this is so funny. So, so what what happened after after you know what period of time did you did you leave the business or did you move up in the business before you left it? So I worked for my parents probably till about twenty three, twenty four, maybe. Uh huh. And Cherish and I were married by this point. She was pregnant, and a friend of mine had started a an online e commerce business, and he said, "Hey, I know that you're." You got a baby on the way. You could probably use some extra money. I, I need some help with my business. You know, you want to come work for me? And and um, at that point, I was like, anything to not clean pools anymore, I was totally down for. Oh, you're burnt up. But what was his business? Uh, so it was e-commerce. We sold patio products online. So we sold, um, you know, fire pits and barbecues and patio heaters and furniture and pretty much anything like outdoor patio related is is what what we sold. So I started working there about 23, 24 years old. By the time I left to pursue LaRev full-time, we had grown the company to over 30 employees. We were doing $8 million in sales every what? year. Yeah. Eight million? Yeah. What what was your role? What was your responsibilities in that in that company, the e-commerce company? I was I was the COO. So my friend Jonathan, he was the CEO. And so I, I was helping him with operations and you know, moving the business forward, managing employees and stuff like that. It was, it was fun. It was hard to walk away from. Well, but you're learning about, clearly you're learning about the business of business and understanding selling and marketing and strategy, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like to build it to $8 million to be a part of that, it sounds like you learned a lot about the business of business. Oh, yeah. 
definitely. So I didn't go to I didn't go to to university, but I went to the school of hard knocks. I went to right. You know, we yeah. we just we figured it out. You know, and and that's very much the way m- my friend Jonathan was, and and that's the way I I've always been. And you know, so we we just we we figured this stuff out, and of course we had people help us along the way, really great people. But um, I learned a lot. I learned. I worked there almost nine years, and uh, a lot of what I do for Larev Films. Uh, I should say what we do, what Cherish and I do is, is because of the things that I learned at this other company. And well, what are some of the biggest things that you learned while you were there? One of the biggest things I learned is that I really want to keep Larev films small. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, really? The whole scaling thing was not for you? Yeah. I mean, um, it's rough. I mean, managing employees is, is hard. And when all you want to do is just run the business and you want to keep pushing forward and, and, and selling stuff, you know, and make, make your buck. And when you have 30 some odd employees, and, and I know that's relatively small compared to some people that manage employees, but, you know, 30 some employees, their problems are become your problems as, as an employer. And so I really love what Cherish and I've been able to do and, you know, managing Larev Films as a very truly boutique business. Um, we, at this point, obviously it could change, but at this point in our career, we, we want to keep it small. We want to, you know, we don't want to do high volume. We, we like being able to really pay attention to every single client that we get. And I think that our, our work reflects, reflects that. I'm going to want to come back to that, but for a moment. So Cheris, you know, coming back with the trajectory here in, mm-hmm. in high school, did you end up going to college? No, I didn't. Kind of same with Lindsay. I mean, we started dating towards the end of high school and knew we wanted to get married. And so that wasn't really priority for me, schooling. I started doing a little makeup for my aunt. And then from there, we kind of started focusing a little bit on just to make some extra money on doing wedding films shortly after we got married, Um, especially, especially having the baby on the way. I also was working on inspections and foreclosed homes. And so we knew that, you know, that's not something that would have allowed me to raise a family and be there and be present as a mother. And so that's how it kind of shifted for me towards focusing on the the wedding business for myself while Lindsay was was doing his other things. Oh, so you you're saying you kind of ran or or start you were handling more of the business side of the of the film business you all you both were creating? Yeah, so we were working on it together, but it was kind of it was primor- primarily my responsibility just since I was home and he obviously had his other job and then we'd film together on the weekends and then I was in charge of the editing and the correspondence between our clients and stuff like that. And so it kind of started small. We borrowed money um, from Lindsay's parents to get our equipment and kind of just, you know, went from there and yeah, grew. Wow. So, so when you say you were also at the weddings, were you also shooting? Yes. Did you have a camera? So it was both of you, two cameras, that kind of thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. What was it like in the very beginning for both of you, whoever wants to answer first, you know, in terms of uh, getting into weddings, like, like, first of all, why, why weddings? Why did you both start getting into weddings? So I'll answer that. I actually um, went on a family vacation to Australia with a bunch of families that we knew. And, and I made, I put together this video. We, we got home from Australia and all the families got together and watched this video that I had edited. And one of the families that had come with us, for whatever reason, they had filmed uh, their friend's daughter's wedding. And they saw this video. They said, hey, you could totally edit a video using the footage that we got at this wedding. And like, we'll pay you. How's a hundred bucks sound? <laughs> and, you know, at, at the time, again, to a 17 or 18 year old kid, a hundred bucks was, was <laughs> awesome. I was like, sure. Yes. That's like two video games, you know? <laughs> so I edited it. The, the family loved it. And that um, family ended up saying, Hey, we should do some more weddings, you know, and, and we'd done a couple weddings with them. And that's where we kind of got this idea that, whoa, there, there's a, a way to make money filming weddings. So when Cherish and I were trying to get married and then eventually having kids and stuff, this idea of being able to make money doing something that we actually enjoy to do, um, just kept coming back. Like, why, why don't we film weddings? And obviously, you know, we humble beginnings, we, my thought was, if I could film 
you know, one wedding a week and charge a thousand dollars. That's four thousand dollars a month <laughs> yeah. just doing weddings. Like that was incredible to me at the time. Obviously, my sights weren't set very high, but it just, you know, the, the wheels, uh, started turning in our brain like hey this is something that we can make money and we actually enjoy doing it like there's there's something to be said about that yeah but you know i'm thinking that both of you are really young i mean you're in your early 20s you, again you're you're talking about or you're starting a family and you had this great job were you a part own i guess were you a part owner of the e-commerce business no i was not so okay so you're an employee so that was the the main income it seems to me like quite a leap to leave that and assume that you're going to be able to get that goal, even though, like you say, you set your, your sights relatively low still, even to get one a week and be able to, you know, do this as a, as a, as a couple for the family. Yeah. How did that go? Well, it was terrifying, honestly, when we made that leap, but both companies, both the video business and the e-commerce business were kind of growing at the same time. So there was a, a time period for many years where, you know, we kind of relied on on both. And after a while, my heart wasn't in the other business anymore. Yeah. And, you know, there's lots of promises of money, you know, and equity in the business. And I knew that while those things sounded nice, I didn't know how how soon they were going to come and if, if they would ever come. But the one thing I did know with our video business with the, the wedding films is it's something that I can control. I, I own, I get to do with, with my wife. We enjoy doing it. It brings us together. And also the amount of time that it gives us to be flexible and spending time with, with our family is just invaluable. So, you, so even though there was all this promise of, of money, you know, in the e-commerce business, and that was definitely enticing f- for me being able to, kind of call the shots in my own life, spend time with my wife, spend time with my family was a lot more valuable. And so, so we made that leap and so far it's, it's been really great for us. And how long have you all now been in business full time? So Larev films, we filmed our first wedding 13 years ago. Wow. Okay. So Cherish, I want to ask you, I think it's in the website or an interview. I'm not sure, but Mm -hmm. um, you had said, um, and this is a quote, um, Lindsay and I have found one of our biggest loves in crafting fine art wedding films and have been visually explaining the unique journey of our couples for over 13 years now. When you talk about crafting fine art wedding films, what do you mean by that? Honestly, I think a lot of it comes down to the way we are editing our films, the way we're we're being able to tell our couple's stories. Um, there's a lot that goes into post-production. Um with with each and every wedding and and each and every wedding is different because all of our couples are different. And so I think one of the biggest things that we focus on is creating those those epic moments, the ones that give you the the chills, the goosebumps, hopefully sometimes even the tears and that is is crafted in such a way that is very unique to to each client and it it takes us a lot of time like there's a lot that goes involved that is involved in that music selection is huge what mm-hmm. um audio we are pulling from the day of the wedding where we're placing that audio in line with the music to to create those feelings within it's not just you know pretty pretty shots that we captured on the day set to music like there's a lot involved in in how we're crafting it and where we're we're placing all those moments yeah, you know, that's a really big deal as a music. It, it's interesting. I've got this other show that I'm going to be releasing in about a month or so called The Music Makers. And I've got one of the people who I've already interviewed was the former president of Fox Films of Music, the music division of Fox Films he was the president of. And everything that he was all about was setting that emotional tone to the visuals through the use of music. And he handled all the big ones, Titanic and Slumdog Millionaire, Avatar and all of those. And that is not an easy thing to do. I think people kind of assume, and, and I know even for myself, I mean, my company is all about music and entertainment, and I love film, and I'm always kind of paying attention to music. But at the same time, I almost forget that someone, you know, or a team of people had to give this a huge amount of intention as to, okay, here's the story, right? Here's the visuals to represent it. But what do we do with music as the underlying kind of the emotional bed of it? 
to help express it. That is not easy. No. And I think um, everyone has such an emotional connection to music. You know, you hear something from your childhood and you can get that nostalgic yeah. feeling or something romantic or for example, me and Lindsay were just in Ro- Rhode Island and now we're like totally turned on to Yacht Rock Radio because just being in that environment, like it just does something to to your emotions and, and makes you feel a certain way. And so it's definitely, for me, one of the most important things when we are creating our films because we want people to feel feel something. Well, so with the music, are you... Um, experimenting with a lot of different possibilities or do you just kind of have an innate sense of, of what you want? Um, I think everything's different. So obviously our weddings, they have a similarity in terms of, of the music, but with other events, like when we did um, Engage Bahamar, we really experimented a lot with that one and did something completely out of the box than what we're used to just because the environment was completely different than you know a wedding and so we do will or we will um experiment if it's if it's a different situation for us and to me that's the most fun ever is trying to do something different and with that particular one you know i was going to mention i mean i had i had heard of you all i had heard of la rev films and it was when i saw the work that you both did for engage bahamar that i was completely knocked out i mean in a little while i want to get to the branding element as well but you know i knew you had really uh, expressed the brand of engage and the emotional element of it and that's when i knew i wanted to have both of you on the show it was when i saw that film i i was really blown away so but when you say that you did something out of the box for for them for that event what do you mean by that what was out of the box I think it was the first time that I've used music like that. It wasn't that cinematic, epic quality of of music, but it was more, there was more grit to it. There was more, like we, we played on the culture of Bahamar and, and incorporated that into some of the film and just making it a little bit more strong than, you know, the, the soft wedding films that we usually do yeah well i'll tell you what it 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 sure worked you know i want to ask about another another quote which was um and and maybe Lindsay, if you can answer this one it in order for us to capture the true essence of your day we need the raw real profound truth on how you came together we're here to invest in your life to bring you to the edge of emotion before actually reaching hysteria it is only through this process that we're able to create a beautiful tapestry that preserves your story for a lifetime um, when you talk about to get the true essence of the day, you need the raw, real, profound truth on how you came together. What do you mean by that? Yeah, it's always good to know someone's story. And many times we show up to a wedding and we sometimes we don't know that that much about the couple and uh, it makes it harder for us to connect with them and kind of tell their story. And so we'll send out a questionnaire Preferably, we like to be able to to speak with the couple. Sometimes it that doesn't always happen uh, if we're booking it through you know a, a planner or or something like that. But yeah, obviously, the more we know about somebody, the it's going to affect the way we shoot their wedding. If I know the history of of how they got together, if I know that you know kind of what makes what makes them them, what makes them tick, you know, you're going to just shoot that differently. You're going to try and shoot that uh, or film that in a way that kind of portrays and, and tells their story. So it is definitely good to know it, but it, as we've gotten more and more into the higher end weddings, a lot of our weddings that we're, we're booking through these planners. And sometimes we, we don't even speak to the couple. We don't meet the couple uh, until the day of the wedding. And so it, it makes it a challenge for us. Um, but you know, we, we like it, we like the challenge and it just makes it a little bit more exciting you get better at at reading people uh, faster when when, <laughs> when you haven't had a chance to meet them first. When you do have an opportunity, whether it's through the questionnaire or or in person on the phone, what are some of the questions in order to you know dig deep? Like from that quote, the raw, real, profound truth. I assume that's more than just "Hey, how would you meet?" Like like how do you go deeper? What how do you what do you ask to get there? I mean, a lot a lot of it is asking you know what. What are certain events that are important to them? Um, obviously, we ask how they met. 
the, you know, the typical stuff, how they got engaged, but just asking them, you know, what, what's important to you? You know, what, uh, what about this wedding is, you know, uh, something that's means something to you and, and why is that the case? And I think that that helps. Um, obviously, you know, we're not grilling them. <laughs> right. No, but I love how you said that to dig a little deeper beyond just the surface. I think that's great. Yeah. And, and again, you know, some people are different than others. They're going to, there's oversharers and then there's undersharers and, <laughs> right, you know, it's right. just everyone's different. But uh, obviously, the more we can learn about somebody, the, the better, the easier it is for us to do our job. You're also talking about vulnerability is what I get. Like when you say undershare, overshare, it seems that to really get deeper, the ones who, who are willing to share more is that there's a vulnerability there, isn't there? No, oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if Cherish has anything to say on that, but. I think when when you do get those clients who who want to be more vulnerable with you, it comes across in the film because then they're going to be essentially more comfortable in front of the camera. Like if, if they know that you know them in and out and you know, you're there to, to serve them and to, to capture their story and, and do it the best way possible. If they know that and they feel that, then they're going to be comfortable. They're going to let their guard down. And it's when they let their guard down in front of the camera that we're able to get like their true self and their true emotion and, and how they love each other. Cause if they don't, it's going to be very stiff Mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to fake that on video as opposed to maybe a picture where you can pose them a certain way. If they're not feeling it, if they're not feeling us, if they're not feeling the situation or each other that will come across in the film and Ultimately, they're not going to be happy with that if, you know, in the end. But you all, you both must get so excited when you do have such a moment that you just described where they really do let go and you're able to grab that. I mean, I I imagine it's just like, yes, Mm -hmm. you know, right? And you know what you're capturing. Absolutely. Yeah. If you are an event planner, venue, caterer, photographer, or any other industry professional, you really should be aware of and using the Party Slate marketing platform. And I want to say, I only work with sponsors whose product or service I'm either fully aware of or even use myself. So, you can create a free profile that can act as a photo-rich portfolio, or Party Slate has additional membership options available. And if you're planning or involved with an event, from weddings to fundraisers to baby showers and, and really everything in between, you, you should use Party Slate to get inspired. You know, save your favorite ideas and contact top professionals to help create your dream event. New photos from real events are uploaded to Party Slate daily and their editorial team publishes articles that highlight the latest trends and planning tips. It is a really great site. You've got to visit partyslate.com to get started. And again, that's partyslate.com. Is most of your work weddings? Yeah, I would say, what do you, th- what do you think, Lindsay? Like 98% is weddings for us. Yeah. We do some commercial work, but not as much as, as we do with our weddings. So, and are, are both of you working the weddings now or, or one of you and the other one's doing other things? Yeah, w- for our weddings, um, primarily we are always shooting together. Um, there are oftentimes, not oftentimes, but certain times when um, we do have to split up um, just because of scheduling with events. But I would say most of the time we, we are together filming. So I want to, just from each of you, Lindsay, what, what, is, what is like a favorite moment at a wedding for you that really moves you? In general or like a specific moment that... If you'd like, you can give both either way. I think it, it changes. You know, when I first started shooting weddings before Cherish and I had kids, you know, it's always that moment when they see each other for the first time. Um, that's, a, that's a big moment. But now as a father you know, having a couple of kids of my own, you see life completely differently. And so I'm always really touched by the interaction between the parents and their kids, you know, seeing, Uh, watching parents uh, see their, their kids go through this, this experience, you know, getting married and and taking this step. And um, I definitely resonate with that now a lot more um, since we have kids and, 
And uh, I, I, you know, especially the fathers and daughters, I, I have a daughter and you, you see that and just, it just, <laughs> it te- oh. tears you up inside, you know, when, when you have those special moments. But I think in general, the, the, those are my favorite moments at weddings. I, I like that a lot. Um, and then obviously just when the couple gets to see each other for the first time, that's a, that's a, always a special moment too. Yeah. Geez, I could resonate so much when you say the father daughter. I mean, I have a daughter and, and I, I, I no longer perform with any of my bands, but I used to, um, especially with my top one. And it was after I had my daughter that I could barely handle it. I would be <laughs> so moved, you know, watching the father daughter dance. And then, you know, certain songs, you know, that they would play. I mean, we're like, we were talking earlier about the music and, oh my God, that gets me. What, what about you, Cherish? What, what, what is, what are some favorite moments of weddings for you? I would have to say my favorite part of the day is being with the bride right before she sees her groom, or whether that be with a first look or a ceremony um, during hair and makeup while she's getting dressed. There's something about the anticipation of that moment. Like you can, you can feel that, that tension in the room, it's excitement, it's nerves, it's emotional at times, you know, with, Sometimes she's alone. I've had moments where it was just me and her and her hair and makeup team and maybe the photographer, um, which is great. I, I love those moments because it's it's a real bonding experience. And I feel very fortunate to have had those with some of our brides. But then there's also those other moments when it's, you know, they're, like Lindsay said, you know, with their parents, their their moms in the room, their their best friends, their sister, and those sweet special moments between them before she even gets to see her groom um it's the last time she's going to be you know a single single woman and there's just something about that 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 i i really love Mm. yeah i love that well i want to move into you know more the business aspect of it now you know the market now for all of us i mean whether it's music photography videography certainly videography too seems to be so saturated, you know, and, and you've also got photographers, you know, who, I mean, a few years ago, right, are starting to uh, add the video element. And, and, you know, maybe some of them are really good at it and others are just perhaps saying, well, you know, I can do this. And so there's a lot of competition. How do you both, how do you stay relevant in this market? How do you stand out and, you know, doing video and film? Um, we rely a lot on our network, Definitely surrounding yourself with with good people that um, you you can rely on. You can uh, bounce ideas back and forth. Uh, those maybe that are doing the same thing as us, but also uh, those in different uh, niches in the wedding industry. Um, that's a, a big thing for us. It, it's important to have um, surround yourself with with smart people and people that are smarter than you and. You know, for us, it's just Cherish and I, we, so uh, we don't, you know, we can't hire necessarily people that are smarter than us, but we can surround ourselves in, in the wedding industry with people that are smarter than us. So, so I think, uh, you know, that, that helps and, and then remaining vulnerable ourselves um, and, and maybe sometimes asking those questions that some people might be afraid to ask because they don't want others thinking that that they don't know what they're doing. But for us, you know, we, we truly want the answer. And so being able to have a good network to, to fall back on is, has been huge for us. And, and it's been a big uh, part of, of our, our growth. Well, let's talk about that for a minute too. You know, you know, having the network, you know, the first step is, is making those connections, you know, and, and doing the networking and being able to follow up effectively. And, and to, how do you all uh, deal with the networking aspect of this, like, like even your first time going to engage, I mean, that's a, that's a big step, you know, it's a, this is a very heavy, you know, heavy conference. And how, how do you uh, view networking? I think for us, we do have a, a slight advantage because it is the two of us. We're completely different personalities. You know, Lindsay's more extroverted where I'm more, more introverted. And so I always tease that, that I'm like, um, the politician's assistant in his ear, like that's so and so. You should go talk to them. Tell them about this. <laughs> Boy, I could yeah. use that. Listen, I need you with me. I am terrible. People will come up and hug me, and I have no idea who they yeah. are. I'm such a mess when it comes to this. Yeah. So it it works. You know, I'm I'm not. It's very difficult for me to just initially 
you know, go up to somebody and introduce myself. But once we do know each other and once Lindsay has kind of opened that door, I feel like my strength is is really in nurturing that relationship, mm. following up and and I'm really big on not being pushy. I can't stand it when people are pushy, when they're hungry, when they're thirsty, you know, for business. And so that's not my style when it comes to networking. And so I try a lot more just to build organic relationships. And if it's mm. not going to happen, if, if we're not feeling each other, then I'm not going to push it, you know. And so all of the people within our network has happened in a semi-organic way. Like we all are general, genuinely, you know, friends and it, it's it's really worked out beautifully. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you're talking about the organic thing. I I was on the way to one engage. I oh, it was the in Banff, and I was on the bus or a shuttle from uh, Calgary, and I met Andre Mayer, who, who's a wonderful photographer, and he's been on the show. And I remember talking to Andre. You know, he's a very kind of laid back guy, and I remember talking to him about this this whole aspect of of engage in any conference and any you know any networking event you know at, at home regardless and he was saying how he really doesn't have any intentions on hitting on anyone in you know in a business sense it's more that he just wants to go have fun hang out make some genuine connections you know if it's see who he runs into and just kind of assume uh, as as opposed to thinking, oh, I'm wasting my time. I need to go meet so and so. He just he just kind of lets it flow, and he has been able to get a lot of business from the after effects of that. And I think it is because of what you're saying. You know that you know again, rather than having a hit list and really being super intentional about it, it's like maybe that's kind of there in the background. But but to just go have fun, see what happens, have one on one. That's my favorite one on one, just personal connections with people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you talked about following up. Now, that's another challenge. You know, I, th- I think for myself, you know, it, let's just say that I'm at a conference for four days like this, whatever. And I, you know, I, let's say, I, I don't know, I connect with 14 people, essentially, you know, I, I mean, to follow up, that is a challenge. I think that's a real, like, like, how do you follow up? And then how do you maintain? You talk about nurturing it and, you know, the numbers can really get up there. How, how Cherish, how do you do that? How do you follow up and nurture? I think every... Every connection is different with how you follow up. Um, one of my favorite, favorite moments um, at our very first engage was after gala night. We're all in our formals and um, a friend of from a friend of ours, Kaylee, um, Kaylee Weiss, she wanted to go see the meteor shower that was happening that night. And oh, so a geez. group of us, you know, in our formals, we're, we told her, you you can't go. We're in Mexico. You're not going by yourself. And so <laughs> a bunch of us went um, out on this dock. A lot of people we had met for the first time and we're all laying down on the dock at night after an oh. epic night of being at the gala and watching this meteor shower. And it was such a special moment. So when we got back back home, I looked up, I I don't even remember the the name of them, but there are these um, pictures you can get of of the sky and the stars with a certain date and certain location and stuff. Oh, wow. And so I bought one for for everyone there and and sent it to them as a little memento, you know, from from that moment. And so, you know, another one, we had a, a dinner, which was another epic moment, you know, at that engage. And um, we all created a group chat after that dinner because we all connected so much. And, you know, every now and then we'll, one of us will chime in and and message each other. But yeah, every, everything's different. Like you don't just want to do a blanket email and, Hey, it was nice meeting you and engage. Like, I don't know. I I think you have to find those moments and, and make it a way for them to remember those moments and remember you by it too. And you're also talking about, you know, you all had a shared experience, mm-hmm. right? That that was outside of, in a sense, it was outside of the conference. And it was mm-hmm. this shared experience and it was an emotional experience, you know, and, and there we go, right? It's it's really, it just brings it all together. It, you know, it, it's heavier. It's, yeah. it's such a nice connection. What about social media? Now, somewhere I read or heard, I'm not sure that you all, use or, or have used some agencies to optimize, for instance, your Instagram and, and to be very intentional about it. Can you say something about that, about how you're utilizing social media at this time? Yeah, I think, um, honestly, our, our best 
engagement that we get from social media is is just the organic uh, traffic. We've used agencies in the early stages to just try and get build our our follower base and and try and um, you know manage our accounts. But honestly, the, we've been most successful uh, with just kind of handling it ourselves. I think people can tell the difference when it's your voice or somebody else's voice, and so. Um, right now, we we handle all of our social media um, in house. Cherish and I do it mostly. Cherish, um, and I think it that comes across. And we've had a lot of success with that because it's it's our voice, you know, it's our personality, and um, and we're able to, you know, I think connect with people better. And and we're not we're not. I don't think we're the the stellar example of who you should follow <laughs> in terms of, you know, getting advice for, for social media, but uh, we've done okay. And, and part of our growth has been because of, of doing s- larger weddings that caught the attention of, of people on social media. And that's kind of helped, helped us grow uh, the most t- to be honest than, than any agency was able to help us do that with. Can you give some examples of what you do, you know, w- with your own voice for social media? We don't do it like enough, I feel sometimes, but, you know, doing the, I guess they call them the talking heads, you know, talking on camera. So stories, you're doing a lot of stories. Stories. Yeah. It's primarily stories. Honestly, we don't post a ton on our feed. I'm not one to post just for the sake of posting. It's, um, you know, obviously we're trying to control the brand and trying to make sure what we put out there is intentional as far as the, the feed goes. On the Insta stories, we do try and show more of our personality, um, primarily when we're traveling or, you know, maybe at a wedding or or things like this. And I think a lot of the success, too, has been when we're at these these events or these weddings is the cross promotion between all the other vendors. I know there's a lot of vendors that are really great at this, you know, we'll get on their stories and they'll get on ours and, you know, we'll tag each other. And that, that has helped quite Mm. a bit as well. And something, if I can brag about my wife for a little bit, something I really appreciate (laughs) that she does is um, one of the things that we'll do a lot for certain weddings is create these one minute Instagram teaser videos from the wedding. Um, And we'll try and get them out as, as quickly as we can. But a lot of times she'll put together an email and she will email a link to download the video to all the vendors that were involved in that that wedding. And she, she will include in the email body, the, the content or the text, um, a list of all those vendors and their social media handles. And so what that does is it really makes it so much easier for everybody that was involved in this wedding to not only you know have access to that clip, but to also... Um, when they post it, make sure that they're sharing it and and tagging all the the vendors that were involved. And I think that's been a um, a, a big deal for us because uh, when when you're creating this content for other people, where that they can show off, you know, uh, their 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 work uh, through our video, um, we've been able to kind of get our our name out there on social media, especially Instagram, in front of a lot of different eyes, and that's kind of helped us grow our business. But it's also kind of a you know. I scratch your back, you scratch mine type of scenario where uh, people are happy to, to, to tag you in it and share it because you're, sh- you know, we've captured their work so beautifully that they want to uh, share it on the, on their, their feed or their story. God, that is such a great idea. You know, and, and what about just in general, um, Lindsay, cause I, I, I know you talk about this out there in the public. How do you use video to market your business? Yeah. And, This is a situation where it's kind of like the shoemaker's kids never have shoes. I could probably do so much better at this, but we're constantly uh, doing, you know, video for uh, obviously weddings, but we're always, when we're not doing weddings, we're always doing videos for other companies. And so it's hard to do as much video marketing for, for us as we'd like. I I have a a goal of, of, you know, focusing on YouTube in the very near future. But one of the things that I I like that we do with video marketing or incorporating video into our, our marketing or our, our business is because we're getting a lot of weddings from planners, uh, referral from planners, and we never meet the couple. Cherish and I have started sending a video introducing ourselves to the potential clients with the proposal. 
Um, and actually that's helped us get a couple really big, um, celebrity weddings even, uh, because instead of being just a, a PDF with our prices and some pretty pictures in graphic design, that's in, you know, probably in a, a stack of maybe a few other, uh, options. It's now coupled with a video of, uh, of Cherish and I saying, Hey, we just want to introduce ourselves. We're so excited for the opportunity. Uh, here's a little bit about us. Here's, you know, a little bit about your proposal that we just sent over. If you have any questions, let us know. And now our client that we've never met puts a face to the name, sees that we're, we're real people. They get a, a, a hint of our personality. And actually, um, every time that we've done that, which hasn't been often, but we've done it a few times. Every time we've, we've sent that video, we've, we've actually booked that wedding. So, Jeez. in fact, Andy, I, I'm going to have you edit that out because I don't want people knowing our secrets. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> oh, I'm totally kidding. I'm oh, joking. <laughs> oh, you, you scared me from it because I was about to say that is absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. And I'm, I'm, I'm like trying to type really softly because I'm telling myself I, I got to <laughs> steal your idea. No, go for like, it. Really? Go steal it for the mute, my music. Yeah. Business. That is so damn brilliant. Oh my God. What, what about also, you know, at, you know, as we kind of start getting ready to wrap up, you both of you have, is it two little kids? How old are they at this time right now at this recording? What, how old are they? They are nine and our youngest is turning seven next month. Wow. Nine and seven. So how are you both, um, handle i mean i was going to ask you about how do you work together as a couple but it's obvious as you know you go so far back you know and you've got so much history with each other and pretty much grew up with each other but but in terms of balancing family life with with you know the more that you do these high end luxury weddings i'm certainly you're traveling how do you handle the how do you deal with this with the kids it's not easy um i think it's something that we're always working on i think a huge no, i know a huge part of our success is because of our parents. Both of our parents live in the same city. And so they are a huge part of, of our children's lives. And, you know, it's the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. That's exactly what's going on in our situation. So when we do travel and we are doing actually filming the weddings, that's where our families come in and, and really help out a lot. And then when we're home, I mean, one of the reasons why Lindsay left his other job to, to do this full time is he's now able to be home with the children and, and, and help me. Um, I'm primarily doing all the editing. And so he, he's here, he's picking them up from school. He's doing homework with them and, and stuff that they never would have been able to, to have their dad a part of had he had a, you know, full time corporate job at a desk somewhere else. And so it's it's really been nice kind of tag teaming it, you know, every chore around the house, every, you know, responsibility with the children, it's it's half and half, you know, with us and and that that helps a lot. I'm super good at doing the dishes now. <laughs> I you like, become a pro. Oh man. There ain't a dish that I can't clean. <laughs> That's funny. No, but it's it's true. I I like being around and uh, you know, you can't put a, a price on dropping your kids off at school or picking your kids up from school and just kind of be, being there to help them with homework. Like I, I've truly in, enjoyed that. And so it's, it's uh, nice to be able to have those opportunities. Yeah. You know, it's interesting when, when my daughter was young enough that uh, had to be driven around, I remember, you know, some friends of mine where the parents would say, Oh, it's such a pain in the ass to have to drive the kids around and all that. And I, I remember thinking, I love this. It, it's an opportunity, you know, to, to be driving my daughter around, having in the car, it's, it's just the two of us, you know, being able to have that time to connect and all that. I just totally cherished all of those moments when, when I could spend that kind of, of, of time with her, you know? I thought it was just wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, geez, thank you both, Lindsay and Cherish. I mean, this has been a great conversation. And, and oh my God, you've given like a, a couple in particular that I wrote down. It wasn't just that one tip. I wrote another one down too <laughs> about creating like the one minute Instagram story clips and tagging all the vendors. I mean, you would think it's obvious, but I didn't think of it. You know, what do I know? So, <laughs> so I really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Lindsay and Cherish of Larev Films. Be sure to check out their website, which is larevfilms.com. That's L-E-R-E-V-E films.com. 
We will have the link in the show notes. Also, their Instagram is at Larev Films. Same with Facebook, Larev Films. So be sure to check out uh, the show notes and more at our website of theweddingbiz.com. If you enjoyed this, please share it with people who you feel will benefit from it and give it a great review. It really helps people to find the show. And don't forget Wednesday to listen to the follow-on segment uh, that comes out each week called The Next Level, in which I have a guest co-host, and together we uh, tease out some of the highlights of the interview and discuss them in a way that you could use to to really apply to your own business to grow and thrive. And this week's guest co-host I'm so excited to announce is Julie Novak, a CEO and founder of Party Slate. Uh, so be sure to check that out Wednesday. Next week's interview is going to be of Rachel Berthistle of the Lake Como Wedding Planner out of Lake Como, Italy. No, I did not get to interview her in Lake Como. It was over the phone, but I am going to go visit in April of next year. That's right. So I'm psyched. Rachel considers herself not a destination planner, but rather predominantly as a planner in a destination. And her work is stunning. So check in next week. Follow us on Instagram at The Wedding Biz. And definitely check out our sponsor, Party Slate at partyslate.com really wonderful website i work with them and that's why i can attest to how good they are not only the team but what they have to offer us in the business again partyslate.com and we'll catch you next week on the wedding days 